Rejection hurts. Any way you want to slice it, any way you want to cut it, it hurts. It can be rejection from a new crush that you have. It can be from a job. It can be from a studio, if you're a podcaster like me. From any quarter, from your parents, from your lover, it hurts. And if you're not careful, you might find yourself dealing or coping with it in unhealthy ways. My name is Jeff. This is Wellness by Jeff podcast. Go on ahead, grab your water, your cup of chai, you know, anything that tickles your fancy. And join me as we speak about rejection. It's normal that any human being needs or feels the need to be accepted. Sometimes people think that if you're hurt from rejection, it's because you're weak or you're sensitive. That is not the case. The truth of the matter is this. We are actually born from birth, right from birth, with the need to be accepted. But it doesn't mean that everywhere you go, you're always going to get a yes. Sometimes that no, you'll get that no. And it always comes after you've really given your all. Take an example of like when you want to apply for a job and you put in your papers, you prepare for the interview and you give your best and then you get a no. It's heartbreaking. So I'm going to speak about rejection today. I'm going to use my own life experiences and something that I've seen also other people go through in a bid to share how we can get through this. Because yes, I've also actually been through rejection. So I know that you guys have noticed that um, maybe for a week or two or three, maybe we were not on air. And that is because we were facing a lot of challenges. And, you know, it takes a whole team, actually, to put this kind of a production together. And the truth of the matter is this, no matter what I, no matter what content I have, if I do not have a team, a supportive team behind the cam and with me, then I cannot have this um, this uh, podcast on air. So my journey as Wellness by JF podcast, this is what happens. We, of course, you have the idea, I want to do this, I want to do this, and we approached the studio. And we were told this is how much you'll pay, and this is what you're going to do, and we did that. But naturally, especially in a new relationship, then you could find that there are challenges. Maybe you people have not yet reached that nice, um, that nice place where you fully understand your person or the person you're working with. And so after, in the first studio, after a few episodes, um, following a back and forth of probably not, um, probably not uh, understanding each other, uh, timelines not being met, me feeling like, my points or my needs as a as a customer and as a podcaster were not being appreciated the studio in a very um harsh and um for me i would call it discriminatory way just said thank you actually what happened they refunded back um, the money that we had paid for that particular production and then they said thank you it's been nice in a way, I didn't feel affected by that um, because I knew, for, if you ask me, point blank period, I'll tell you, I feel I was discriminated against or I was rejected because I was a po small podcaster. I did not have the following that probably this kind of production house has. And uh, I feel like, honestly, they wouldn't do it to like a seasoned podcaster. And so I didn't take it personally. I actually moved on very swiftly. And the one that really affected me and the one that really got to the core of me, that rejection was the second place that, uh, you know, we tried to have a hookup with, a sync up, get your mind out of the gutter. So we worked well and all of a sudden we started getting a lot of, a lot of heat, basically because we were supposed to shoot on a certain day. We were not able to shoot on that day and it brought a lot of heat. A lot of words were used. And I'm not going to go into the details of that. But what I can say is on that day, when I got that message and I realized that 
this is what is going on. I literally went into my kitchen and I cried my eyes and my heart out. You might ask why I cried, because this is what rejection does to you. Rejection makes you feel like you're not good enough. Rejection makes you feel that like I've done my best. I've put in my effort. I'm here. I'm ready to go. I am not going to do this again. I'm here to tell you that, yes, me, I actually thought of shelving the podcast and letting it go because what that, disen that disengagement was rough. It was harsh. And even if it's in the context of a romantic relationship, if you love someone or if you want to be with someone or you are with someone, but they are constantly rejecting you, it can make you feel like you're not worth it, like you're unlovable, like you're not good enough. And if you're not careful, you might even get yourself snowballing and spiraling into depression and anxiety. Let me just encourage you that that happened to me too. And I remember crying so much. But when I came out, it didn't happen like in a, in, a sh in a long while. It was in a short while. I was feeling so low. And I remember actually going out and tell, tell, saying to my spouse that I'm not going to do the podcast anymore. I, I am tired. I'm fed up. Why has this happened the second time? The first time, you're still like easy. You're still okay. But the second time, it actually leads you. And this is what I hope rejection would do for you lead you to asking questions. Is there something that I can work on? Maybe could it be my communication? Am I communicating clear enough? Am I stating my needs clearly enough? In this case, I will tell you without a shadow of a doubt that I had communicated very, very clearly. And so what does that mean? It means the power to reject does not lie with you. The power to reject lies with the other person and you cannot stop anybody from rejecting you. So long as you are alive, I want you to know that you will face rejection. But I want to use this episode to show you how we can turn around rejection. You know, I love how the good book puts it, that something that was intended for bad, everything that was intended for bad actually works in the end for good for those who love the Lord. So this has been actually a true like um, story in my life. And funny enough, on that day that I was washing the dishes before, you know, I got this message, I was listening to Steve Bartlett, who is the host at the Diary of a CEO, who is totally, totally, totally among my most favorite podcasters and one of the people that I hope to host one day on Wellness by JF podcast. And I was shocked. I think it is this episode that he did with um, Manson, the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. So he said one thing and I was, that it happened on the same night as I'm washing my dishes, crying in my kitchen. And Steve Bartlett said that he, Steve Bartlett, the biggest podcaster in the world and my absolute, absolute, absolute idol, was rejected at a place where he was hosting his podcast. That the building where he was hosting his podcast said to him that he brings too much traffic to the building and they do and he has too many downloads on his podcast and they do not want to work with him. I remember hearing that and I was like, what a timely message. If that can happen to Steve Bartlett, then who is JF? Rejection is part of life. But today I will show you how we can turn around rejection and how it can work for us. When it happens, like when it happened to me, I felt like giving up. I felt like giving up the podcast. I felt like I never want to be in front of the camera again. I never want to do this. But in between, after crying, after, you know, um, I think I spoke to Charity, who's always like a great support system for me. I spoke to my husband. I started processing my emotions. Like why? How am I feeling? Why am I feeling sad? I started taking accountability for my part in the degeneration of that relationship. 
it's not all times that you're rejected that you have a part to play. No, there are some that people are outrightly mean. And for that, it's only necessary that you know how to come out of it. But for relationships that you feel that maybe I should have done better, it's good to process your emotions. I have a bit of notes that I put here that uh, at least help my can help my thought process. There, um, it's good to it's um, it's important to realize why rejection hurts so much. Like why does it set me back so much? And you find two things as to why that happens. There are a few psychologists who've spoken about it, and I mean if you try and Google or research about it, you'll find a bit of information on it. And it's mostly about something called attachment styles. And I'll not go really, really deep into it, but it's because naturally we are born with the need to feel loved and accepted. But there is healthy attachment styles and there is unhealthy at attachment styles. So we're gonna go a bit on, um, on the healthy side. So when you're rejected naturally, it stings. Actually, the actual word is that rejection stings. It feels as if life is ending for you. It feels as if like you're useless. It feels as if things are not working good for you. It feels like the world has ended and there's those feelings of depression and, and uh, sadness and anxiety. But you have to go deeper into why am I actually feeling like this? If you have healthy attachment styles, you'll realize one thing. And this is what I realized for me as Wellness by JF Podcast. I am rejected or I was rejected because I'm good enough. I am so good. I am beautiful. I am intelligent. I am confident. Wellness by JF Podcast is a great podcast. It needs to be out there. People need to hear it. The flip side of it is I am rejected because I'm not good enough, because my, my, my content is not good, because people are just, um, other content creators are better. I chose to take part A, which is I'm good enough, I'm beautiful, Wellness by Jeff podcast is a great podcast. And soon enough, everybody, including Steve Bartlett, will listen and want to be on this podcast. So I took that energy and I turned it around. The other thing you can do is practice self-care. The most important person you have is yourself. And I remember that day, literally my husband telling me, listen, even if it's a phone you have, so long as Judy is there, so long as JF is there, then Wellness by JF podcast is there. So you must, Practice self-care. Learn how to self-soothe. You know, when you have a baby, when you get a baby, sometimes they use the breast, the nipple, to soothe themselves. And there's some pediatricians who actually encourage you that instead of, you know, having to use your, having your nipple with the baby stuck on it the whole time, you can buy for them a pacifier. And once you put it in their mouth, even though there's no milk coming in, but the child is... Uh, supposedly sucking on it, the baby self suits and they actually fall asleep on that, thinking that the nipple, the pacifier is the nipple. Learn how to self soothe. You don't need anybody to teach you that. The other thing that worked for me is I accepted, in as much as it was painful, in as much as it hurt me, I accepted. I accepted that. It wasn't going to work. I accepted that I had given my best. I accepted that I had communicated my needs, but they were not accepted or validated on the other side. And that's okay. I accepted that I had been rejected, which is not easy because I mean, we, want, we all think that we're the best thing that ever happened in this world because rejection in a way makes you question your self-worth. But that acceptance, is actually the first step to healing. Treat yourself. If you have nice candles, um, 
uh, if you like uh, uh, some soothing music. I remember on that day, I went for a long shower. I literally just went, uh, put my candles in my shower, my shower gel, and I sat there and I sat in my emotions. Learn to sit in your own emotions. Don't run away from them. Process them one by one by one. The part where you're feeling sad, the part where you're feeling I'm not good enough, process it. And there's something that I love to do that many people sometimes do or don't do. Just say a word of prayer. I said a word of prayer and I asked God to please heal my heart and to show me what is the next step, to show me like what to do. When you're rejected, you need a support system. And I'm not gonna lie, I leaned in heavily, heavily on my support system. But there's one person who was truly, truly um, instrumental in turning this around. And I remember just calling her. And funny enough, she's not even my friend, actually. I wouldn't call her a friend, but you know, just someone we're close with. And she, I called her and I explained the situation. And that lady spoke to me, told me, like brought it back to perspective, like this is it. And she said, do not worry. We are gonna do this. Let's take our time. Let us process what is going on and let us move on ahead. I dare say, rejection is redirection. It is from that whole scenario that you cannot believe that I actually even got more zeal to work on the podcast. I immersed myself in reading and listening to podcasts and researching so that I could have more content. And even though we were on a very good trajectory and the lack of content and the lack of putting things out there, like really literally set us back. I'm happy to say that we've come fully loaded now. We feel ready. We feel ready to go. The bad things that can happen when you're rejected, but do not allow rejection to make you hang your boots and forget your dreams. Lastly, <clears throat> the other thing that helped me a lot is, you know how a cow, when it eats, I, I, we learned this in agriculture back in high school. So when a, a cow, when it eats, later on in the night, it regurgitates the food and then it ruminates on that. Avoid doing that. I know it's hard, but avoid doing it. Don't go to those messages that were sent and start checking, 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 checking. Go in your head. You're now going through that conversation again. Avoid it. Stop it. If you can, delete. If it was a message, delete it. If it was an email, delete it from your mailbox. Do not keep it. Do not keep on going back there. Because the moment you go back there, those feelings, you regurgitate them. If you felt hurt the time you got the email, 10 years later, if you still have the email, you will still feel hurt. So what I would advise you to do, it has happened, it's happened, accept it process it, do your self-care, lean on your support system and move on. Do not go back there because it is in that rumination that even sometimes you can get angry. And if it's a, a romantic interest, in the middle of the night, you sent a message. You don't intend to, to, um, get back with them or you don't intend to have anything with them but because you keep on ruminating about it then you might find yourself in that cycle hmm. lastly i'd like to say something and this comes from somebody who's been there i've heard before that people who do wellness um, content they only speak from a textbook perspective. Like this is what you should do, this is what you should do, this is what you should do. And that is why I wanted to be vulnerable and open with you guys on this. This has happened to me. 
it's not from the textbook this is it and there's many many other uh rejection stories that i have it's on that these are like very recent and regarding the podcast as well rejection should not make you or stop you from following your dreams you wanna uh, have a podcast like me you don't know who to speak to there's no there's no one to hold your hand you go everywhere you're rejected try again you want to try your hand at cooking or whatever try again let not that first no make you feel like you're not good enough and that you cannot achieve anything look at anybody who's anybody they never got a yes they actually got knows it is from that no that you actually sit in there it is from that no that you decide that i'm going to do something of my own and i remember when i was speaking with this lady who encouraged me on that day i remember telling her that when i make it not if i make it i said when i make it because i'm sure i'm going to make it in podcasting i will hold the hands of upcoming podcasters and i will ensure that they do not they will not have a tough start like i did because it is in impacting lives that you actually fully know and discover your potential i repeat it again rejection is redirection i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode thank you all so much for tuning in i'm looking forward to reading your comments your suggestions sharing your experiences with me about your own you know your own brushes with rejection and what you guys did to get over it don't forget to like to share to subscribe i've been your host jf this is wellness by jf podcast and don't forget to always push through that